the idea behind integrating with respect to y is almost like a substitution problem using an integral um, where we're going to substitute y for the function of x. We're going to get y's into the integral instead of x, and we're going to change the way the integral looks. Um, we could do that for a couple of different reasons. Um, we may do it so that we don't have to break it up into different regions. If you remember, we, uh, we had to split up a region in, in one of the integrals we did last week, or one of the areas we found last week. We had to break it up into two different parts and find two different areas and add them together. Um, so one, one thing this might help us with is it might allow us to find an area with one integral rather than splitting up into two. Um, it may also change the integral from something that we cannot integrate to something that we can integrate, something that would be easily integrable, uh, meaning that it can be integrated. Um, so there's, there's a few different reasons why we might switch from integrating with respect to x to integrating with respect to y. Um, and we'll, we'll look at a couple of them here, and, and we'll look at how it works first. Um, so if we want to integrate with respect to y, I, I want to look at what that is going to look like. So I'm going to start with a really basic example. Um, there's a couple of important things in this example that are going to make, um, make this work, and we can kind of make adjustments to future examples if those aren't true. Um, the first is that this is a strictly increasing function, um, or a non-decreasing function uh, would work also. Now, there's a slight difference between increasing and non-decreasing. A uh, non-decreasing function could also be constant. It could have a zero slope at some point where an increasing function wouldn't necessarily. Um, but it is an increasing function over the interval from zero to a. Uh, and also, it goes through the origin. So. Um, if we evaluate this integral right here, what area is that going to give us? Bottom. Yeah, it's going to give us the area underneath uh, that function. Uh, it's going to give us that area right there. What I've actually done is drawn a bunch of rectangles, and I split the rectangles apart so you can see them a little better. Um, but what, what we did to start with integrals is we added up a bunch of rectangles, um, and we did what's called a Riemann sum. And we, we figured out that if we used infinitely many rectangles that are infinitesimally wide or really, really, really <coughs> narrow, uh, then we get the actual area, which is the same as the integral. Um, what would this integral right here represent? The integral from 0 to f of a of f of x with respect to y. Yeah, it would actually be the top part. But our rectangles this time would not be vertical. The rectangles wouldn't be going this way. But since we're integrating with respect to y, we're moving along the y-axis. And so our rectangles, our Riemann sum rectangles, are actually going to be horizontal. They're going to look like that. So when we integrate with respect to y, we're integrating by adding up rectangles that are perpendicular to the y-axis. So, so we end up with the picture that looks like this. And it gives us that blue area there. Now, one interesting fact, and this is um, partly where the um, integration by parts formula comes from, um, if we add up those two areas, the integral from 0 to a of f of x with respect to x, and the integral from 0 to f of a of uh, f of x with respect to y, what, what is that area right there? Yeah, it's just a rectangle, so it's f of a times a. Um, so that, that's just kind of a, an interesting fact that, that comes from this, um, that if we integrate with respect to y, we're not necessarily finding the same area. In this particular case, we're finding two areas that add together to form a rectangle. Um, and again, that um, kind of describes where the integration by parts formula comes from. Um, we won't get into that right now, but, um, but it works. Let's say I want to integrate with respect to y to find this green area here. What could I do? Instead of, instead of doing what I did here to find this blue area, um, I want to find this green area here. So let me go, uh, let me drop. So let's say here I don't want to, re I don't want to integrate with respect to x. Um, so I don't want to use this integral, but I still want to find this area. 
what would I do? And here's what I want you to think about. How did we find an area, this was on Friday, going all the way back to Friday, I know it was a few days ago. Uh, how did we find an area that was not between a curve and the x-axis, but between two functions? So if I drew a, an equivalent picture for a function with respect to x, let's say I wanted to find this area right here. What did I do? I integrated, but I took the... I subtracted. Yeah, I subtracted. I took the top function minus the bottom function, right? Or it, it might be easier uh, to use the preposition bigger and smaller. Or not preposition, but instead of using the preposition top, um, bigger and smaller works better because when we're talking about with respect to y, um, I would want to take this function right here I would want to take this minus the f of x. So I would want to find um, these rectangles right here. And to do that, I would integrate a minus f of x with respect to y. Now, I haven't gotten to this yet, but we are going to have a problem here. Because I have f of x, which means I have a function in terms of x, but I want to integrate with respect to y, so my problem is what? <coughs> yeah, I can't integrate with respect to y when I don't have y's. I can't integrate x's with respect to y, so I, I would have to rewrite this in terms of y. All right, so what I want to do now is just look at some examples. Sorry, skip through all that. Um, and I want to look at this particular example. You guys remember this one? Yeah. It looked like this. Um, what we did on Friday, we did this a couple of different ways. We found the area by uh, breaking it up, partitioning it um, right here at 2. And we found this area by taking the integral of the square root of x from 0 to 2. And we found this area by taking the integral of the square root of x minus x minus 2 from 2 to 4. Um, that was one way we did it. We added those two together. Um, did we do it by subtracting? Whether we do it by partitioning and adding up this purple region and this blue region together, or taking the whole area, uh, which I'll show you what I mean by the whole area, taking this whole area here and then subtracting that area, uh, either way we have to find two areas and we have to subtract. But what we can do, if I clear this here, what we can do is we can integrate perpendicular to the y-axis, and we don't have it broken up in any way. We can take this integral, and it's going to be one clean integral the whole way. Does that make sense? Now, in this case, which function is the top function, the bigger function? No. The x minus 2. Okay, so this function right here is going to be the bigger function. And which function then is going to be the smaller one? The square root of x. Does everybody see why? If I pick, if I pick any y value on that region, let's say I just pick here where um, y equals 1, um, we're going to have an x value of 1 and we're going to have an um, x value of 3. So in this case, the x minus 2 function has a bigger value than the square root function. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this as an integral with respect to y. So let's go ahead and just get it started here. Um, I'm going to start by doing that. To find this area, we're going to integrate something with respect to y. Now, I need to take the bigger function minus the smaller function. So which one's the bigger function? Okay, it's, I'm going to write it as g of x right now, and, and you'll see why in a second. And the smaller function is? Now, what is g of x in terms of y? Meaning, um, what's that? 
Yeah. Basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to solve this for x, and we're going to solve this for x, and figure out what x equals in each of these. Okay? So we're going to write these as a function of x rather than a function of y. So, I'm sorry, we're going to write it as a function of y instead of a function of x. So as Evan said, we're, instead of having y equals x minus 2 for g of x, we're going to have x equals y plus 2, and that's just solving for x there. And instead of... Yeah, so instead of y equals the square root of x, I'm going to get x equals y squared. Um, and it's really just, well, it doesn't really matter because we're only looking at the, the positive y values. Um, so we're going to replace this g of x and this f of x here with the y plus 2 and the y squared. Um, one other thing, though, I need on this integral, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in here before we move on. What are our limits going to be? Am I going to go from 0 to 4? No, because I'm not integrating with respect to x, so I'm not going along the x-axis. I need to go along the y-axis. So my limits here are going to be what? 0 to 2. Because this intersection right here, where they meet, that's going to be at the point 4, 2. So my y values are going from 0 to 2. But now this integral right here is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of y plus 2 minus y squared with respect to y. Now, I think you know how to evaluate that definite integral, so I'm going to go ahead and let you do that on the calculator. Um, or you could do it analytically if you want, but I'll give you a second to do that. Since we used the calculator to get it, let's go ahead and give the decimal answer. Oops, <coughs> which that is not it. Uh, so we're going to get 3.333 accurate to three decimal places. Um, if you evaluated this analytically, you would get 10 thirds as your answer. Uh, so that's the same answer we got before, right? Right, Haley? Yep. Yep. Um, but this way, and it, it took a little while to get there, um, but once we got there, it was actually a simpler integral to evaluate um, for a couple of reasons. Um, if we were going to do this analytically, the, the square is easier to integrate than the square root. Um, but once we got there, it ended up being one simple integral to evaluate rather than two. So it, it, it made our work a little bit easier.